Hi guys, I'm going to show you five different transitions for your edits. Let's get started. Right-click outside the composition, hover over New, and create a solid layer. You can copy my settings. Select the solid layer, then press Ctrl plus Shift plus D to split the layer. Leave it on top of the first zoom layer and trim it from both sides. Select the solid layer, then press T on your keyboard. Click the little clock icon next to Opacity to enable keyframes. Then go to the last frame of the solid layer and set the opacity to zero. Select all keyframes and press F9 on your keyboard to apply Easy Ease. Press this to open the graph editor, then right-click and select Speed Graph. Adjust it to match mine. This is how your transition should look. On to the next one. In the second transition, we will create a new white solid layer, just like before. But this time, we will split it into two different layers, each two frames long. Just follow my steps carefully. Split the layer and leave only one or two frames, then place it just before the transition. Search for wipe line in the effects and presets panel, then drag and drop it onto the solid layer. Make the changes just like mine. Set the white percent to 50 and the angle to 180 on the first solid layer. After we're done, select the layer and press Ctrl plus D to duplicate it. Then place it at the start of the transition and change the angle to zero. I change my solid layer duration from one frame to two frames. This should be the result of the transition, but we're not done yet. There's one final step left to complete this transition. Create an adjustment layer, set its duration to two to three frames, and place it three frames before the transition. Search for S halftone in the effects panel, drag and drop it onto the adjustment layer, then set dots frequency to 150, dot sharpen to 15, and smooth source to five. Here is the final result. It works best on a glitch style edit in my opinion. In this transition, we'll need a solid layer again. After creating the solid layer, select it and press S on your keyboard to reveal the scale values. Click on the small chain icon to unlink the values, then scale down the left value to your liking. I prefer it around this much. Now select the new layer and split it by pressing Ctrl plus Shift plus D. We'll make it 30 frames long, leaving 15 frames before and 15 frames after the transition. Also, tick the motion blur icon. This will make the transition smoother once it's finished. However, if you're creating multiple transitions like this, it might increase render time. While selecting the layer, press P on your keyboard to reveal the position keyframes. Then right-click on position and select separate dimensions. Create a keyframe at the start for the X position, then move the layer all the way to the left or the other direction. Just make sure it's completely out of the screen. Now go to the last frame of the solid layer and create another keyframe for the X position. This time, move the solid layer to the opposite side from where it started. Make sure it's completely out of the composition screen. Then move the last keyframe forward. Select both keyframes and press F9 to apply Easy Ease. This will smooth out the motion, but will also adjust the graph to make it a proper transition. Now copy exactly how I adjust my graph. The graph is important for this transition to work properly. Here is the final result. In this transition, we'll create an adjustment layer. Right-click outside the comp, select New, then click Adjustment Layer. Split it so it's 45 frames long, ending exactly at the start of the second video layer, just like I do here. Now, while selecting the adjustment layer, press T to show the opacity. Create a keyframe at the start and set the value to zero, then go 30 frames forward and set the value to 100. After that, search for Amino Diffusion in the Effects and Presets panel, then drag and drop the effect onto the adjustment layer. After that, create a keyframe for error across at the start, then go 75 frames forward and create another keyframe. This time, set the value to 1.4. This is how it should look. If you don't like the result, feel free to tweak the keyframes to your liking. Once you're done with that, change the color count from 2 to 4. This will give it a red color, which I think looks really cool for this transition, but you can always adjust it to your liking. 
Here's how it looks. It's still missing something. If we want to blend it smoothly with the second zoom, we need to add a solid layer. Just like before, right click, select new, then choose solid layer. After that, cut it into two pieces, each two frames long. Then search for S-Wipe line in the Effects and Presets panel and drag and drop the effect onto the solid layer. Now set the angle to 180 degrees and the wipe percent to 50. Then press Ctrl plus C to copy the effect and paste it onto the second solid layer. After that, just set the angle to zero and you're done. This should be the result. I think it looks good, but we can still enhance it. Let's add Transform to this layer from the Effects and Presets panel. Search for Transform in the Effects and Presets panel, then drag and drop it onto the Adjustment layer. Go to the start of the Adjustment layer, then create a keyframe for scale inside the Transform effect. Next, go to the last frame of the Adjustment layer and create another scale keyframe, but this time set the value to 120. Move the last keyframe forward a bit, then select both keyframes and press F9 to easy ease. This will smoothen out the zoom effect. Now copy exactly how I adjust my graph. This is the final result for this transition. It's a great choice for a sad or emotional edit, and you can always customize and tweak the settings to suit your style. On to our final transition. Start by pressing T on your first zoom layer to reveal the opacity settings. Create a keyframe at the start and set the value to 40. Then, move to the middle of the layer, create another keyframe, and set the value to 100. Finally, go to the last frame of the zoom layer, create one more keyframe, and set the opacity to 20. Then select all three keyframes and press F9 to easy ease them. This will smooth out the transition and make the opacity changes look more natural. After that, while selecting the keyframes, press Ctrl plus C to copy them, and then paste them onto the other layers you want to apply the same opacity transition to. If you followed all the steps correctly, this is how it should look so far. But remember, this isn't the final result yet. We still have a few touches left to finish the transition. Let's keep going. Create an adjustment layer and make sure it's placed on top of all the other zoom layers. Also cut it at the end. Then search for S-Shake in the Effects and Presets panel and drag and drop it onto the adjustment layer. Change the S-Shake settings to your liking. Always set Z-Dist to 0.95. This will make it so there are no weird borders at edges. After that, you can adjust amplitude for shake intensity and frequency for shake speed. You can either copy my settings or adjust yours, but I recommend watching me change the settings first and then tweaking yours accordingly to get a better idea. This is the final result. That's all for this tutorial. If you have any questions or ideas, drop them in the comments or join my Discord to chat. I try to keep my tutorials beginner friendly, but as we go deeper, some things might get a bit advanced, so I recommend exploring After Effects on your own too. Make an edit or two, experiment with features, and that's honestly the best way to learn. Alright guys, see you in another tutorial. Bye.